It is early days, and we've been talking a lot about mail-in ballots this evening. We may be talking about it, particularly if it does end up being closed for many days to come. So I'm uh, very pleased to be joined by Jennifer Morell, a former elections official, and Bernard Whitman, a Democratic strategist and pollster. Uh, Jennifer, maybe I can and ask you first. There's been so much talk of the possibility of uh, election ballot fraud in this. It's even been suggested that the Russians are trying to interfere uh, with mail-in ballots. I mean, how credible do you think the possibility of fraud is? How seriously should we take it? So thanks, Tom. It's really a pleasure to be here. Um, we know that those instances of fraud are uh, few. They're rare. Uh, those that have uh, alleged that there is widespread fraud have yet to provide uh, clear evidence of that. And I think that thing that's important for viewers to keep in mind is that the process of uh, the steps that we that election officials go through to process those mail ballots, it's more than just opening the ballots. There are layers of security all the way from the time they're received by a local office until they're scanned and ready to be tallied and counted. And so understanding each of those steps of verification uh, are are really important to understanding how how what a trustworthy um, option this is for voting. Bernard, are you worried about these allegations of fraud and the possibility that if it's close, we might end up with an election mired in dispute and legal argument and perhaps worse? Yeah, I'm incredibly worried about it. I think the most likely scenario actually is that Joe Biden wins and we'll be looking particularly at Arizona. If things uh, go uh, or things are a little muddled with Florida and Georgia and uh, in Ohio and North Carolina going for Trump, then we may have to wait to see what Arizona brings because Pennsylvania, of course, counts it very, very late. I think the most likely scenario, though, is that Biden does win. My biggest concern, actually, is the second most likely scenario, that Trump, through voter intimidation, voter suppression, and judicial activism, uh, manages to steal the election. But so far, uh, just commenting on your earlier panel's question uh, point, Donald Trump, in all likelihood, has to win Florida and North Carolina and Georgia and Ohio. So we may know in the next few hours if this is going to be a long night and we have to wait for Arizona. Uh, or whether if, uh, if the president actually fails to win any of those states, his electoral chances are in deep, deep trouble. Democrats, I mean, just the whole idea of Florida kind of always seems understandably to make Democrats nervous. You know, you, you've been ahead in the polls, let's be blunt there, admittedly in a tiny way, pretty consistently, and yet here it is the possibility of it slipping from the Democrats' grasp once again. What do you, I mean, are you worried by that? What does it tell you? Do you think about anything going on elsewhere or is just Florida, Florida? Actually, I mean, from my perspective, the count in Florida looks pretty good right now. In a lot of the counties, Trump was underperforming his 2016 vote by one, two, three points. He only won by one point. So if he underperforms by a point and a half, Joe Biden can win that state. Joe Biden does not have to win Florida. Joe Biden does not have to win North Carolina or Virginia. I mean, he does have to win Virginia, but he does not have to win Florida. Donald Trump has very, very few past the presidency, um, and Joe Biden has many. Jennifer, can I just come back to you on the whole question of mail-in votes? I mean, people in Britain, I think, don't really know that there have been hundreds of legal cases already. Can you just talk us through the, you know, how complicated it is, or it may be, ensuring that every vote counts, and why there are so many potential sort of legal arguments, if I can put it that way, if a party wants to make legal argument about these mail-in ballots? Sure. So I'll try and cover both uh, the verification or the security part of it, as well as the challenges. So it actually starts when they're delivered. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, discussion and some some challenges around the use of mail ballot drop boxes. Uh, those are actually a very secure way to return your ballot. Those are usually collected uh, by a two member team. There's a whole series of paperwork, uh, security seals that have to be verified, uh, things that have to be checked before those ballots can be removed. And then when they return those, there's a whole process for sort of accounting for those. So that's, uh, that's one of the first sort of ways that we secure that. When all those ballots come back, and this is regardless of the state or jurisdiction, uh, as one of your earlier guests mentioned, uh, the, these rules vary and the type of equipment varies state to state. But across all 50 states, there's a process for checking those ballots in to give that voter credit for returning a ballot. Uh, and that's where most of us, uh, most of the states, even those that couldn't start counting until today, could at least do that process. And there is an opportunity in there for somebody to challenge that voter's eligibility. 
uh, to cast that ballot. So that's one area that they can challenge. As we sort of continue to move through the process, uh, once the voter has been given credit, those ballots have to be sorted, they have to be counted and accounted for. There's usually some sort of verification process. And this is again where we see a lot of uh, differences across the state. So we verify the voters uh, that the ballot belonged to that voter, their, their eligibility, their identity. Some states do this with signature verification where they're comparing the signature and the registration to the signature on the mail ballot. Some have a witness requirement or other information validating that voter's identity that has to be completed. Again, this is one area where we see challenges um, on both sides to, to that process. Uh, once we get to the ballot to that point, it still has to be opened. Sounds easy, but we have to open that envelope, take out a security envelope, open that security envelope, remove a ballot, unfold it. Um, unlike many countries, we have really long ballots here in the States. They can be uh, anywhere from 14 to 19 to 21 inches, double-sided, and sometimes three, four, five cards in an envelope. They all have to be removed, flattened, and be prepared to be scanned uh, and then ran through scanners. So it's quite a process. And through all of that, there are steps where we pause and account and verify uh, who took possession of those as they sort of move through the process. So most of the challenging is upfront, uh, but it's important for folks to know that there is are these layers of security all the way through until they're ready to be counted. Okay, Jennifer and Bernard, thank you very much indeed for joining us. We'll